Hello everybody and welcome back to the Medbros channel and in today's video we're going to be talking about how I got into the University of California Berkeley. So when I got into UC Berkeley it was the number one public university in the world as of right now I believe it's tied with UCLA. So back when I applied it was actually quite a different time. I was in the top percent of my class. I forget the exact percentage but I was already guaranteed the UC Davis. You guys have probably heard the story if you watched my why I hated high school video and I've spoken about this in the past as well especially on our podcast. So go check those out if you missed it. But basically being guaranteed into UC Davis, it was already a school that I was open to going to. I wasn't too stressed about the entire admissions process. Nevertheless, I set myself up in high school so that I could go to pretty much any university in this country that I wanted to go to if I was lucky enough to get accepted. But the overall experience of high school was a very interesting one. And obviously high school is very critical to what college you're gonna go to what you do throughout high school in terms of your extracurriculars, in terms of your grades and whatnot, is what's gonna be making up the reasoning for why a college would accept you. So starting off with my freshman year, I went to a very hyper competitive high school in the Bay Area. Many of you know exactly what high school I am talking about. So if you guys had watched my previous video on why I hated high school, you guys know that I've moved around a lot and I had moved to the area and started middle school, eighth grade during this time. Already I was planning ahead on what classes I was gonna get into. My entire goal in eighth grade was to break into these honors classes because it was so competitive that not anybody could just take these honors classes. You actually had to qualify. You had to actually take a passing test because these seats were already so full in this area. Because I moved into eighth grade from a completely different program, I couldn't just sign up for these honors classes because the way wait list to even get in them was so long. I was doing really well in my normal science classes and I was getting like above 100%. So I went up to my teacher and basically went on a rant about why I should be in honors classes. They ended up giving me this crazy exam that even to this day, I probably wouldn't score well on. And this exam was used as basically a gatekeeping tool to keep anybody out of these honors classes. So that sets me up for high school where again, going into high school, no pre-AP classes, no honors classes my freshman year, really just stuck to the typical geometry math class, Spanish one, PE, geography, health science classes, your kind of typical freshman setup. And again, it was a very interesting experience. This is far before I gave any craps about how I was doing in school. My main focus at this point was to make the basketball team do really well, which we did. We went undefeated. Shout out to you guys. Although I could have played better if my coach did not make me power forward. I still hold you to that. To this day, I should have been playing small forward. I should have had the ball in my hand. I don't know what I was doing posting up as a five. What was like five, 10 at the time posting up against like six, two, six, three guys. I'm looking at you coach, not a good idea. <laughs> In any case, studying was the last thing on my mind at this time. I was just going to school to have a good time. And I ended up with not so hot grades for the giant overall picture of things. I think I ended up with a couple B's with one B even being in PE because I refused to swim in that nasty ass pool. People were pissing, people were crapping. I knew how unhygienic some people were. I wasn't about to get in that pool no matter what. And sometimes in a very hyper competitive environment, a very interesting thing happens. And that is instead of kind of getting elevated and you know trying to match all these individuals that are studying super hard, you kind of get pushed in the opposite direction at times. Vast majority of students at this place had parents that were pushing them to be doctors, engineers. Most people from here went to really top notch schools, Harvard, MIT. Just to put it in perspective, there were 11 to 12 valedictorians <laughs> for my year. Honestly, I can't really even comment too much about my freshman year. I don't remember too much. I don't remember anything that I learned. I just remember I had some pretty good friends, had a great time playing basketball. Oh, one more distraction that the boys might remember was Miss P, our geometry teacher. This is a bit of a distraction. <laughs> While we're talking about my freshman year, shout out to my geography teacher, the most inadvertently racist dude that you'll see, but was an awesomely decent guy. Literally in the middle of class one day, hey, hey Harmon, Harmon, could you tell me why Indians do this every time they say something? Every time they say something? And I'm sitting here like, what the hell? <laughs> what do you want me to say to that, man? In all honesty, if I had stayed at this high school and continued down this path that I was going, I would have probably ended up going down the career path that a lot of my friends around that time did. Going ahead and doing two years of community college, transferring to a UC, uh, getting jobs at Google, or going down a completely different route than I had currently gone down. Key being that before I moved into this very hyper competitive area, I was just at a really chill environment. I had a 
private Christian school, very small, everyone knew everybody. I played like this role of this older brother of this entire school of like 60 kids and it was just this really tight knit environment and the studying wasn't really up to par in terms of what was going on in this place. So being taken from that environment, thrown into this hyper competitive top notch program with all these crazy intelligent kids that are going to Kumon tutoring every day. Uh, I remember the first time I even figured out what Kumon was, I was just in awe. I'm actually really glad that I got out of that place. Of course, nothing wrong with going down that route of community college and then going down to UC. I probably would have ended up in the same place, possibly. But uh, just, just letting you know that I probably would not have directly gone to UC Berkeley given the way things were going. So what ended up happening was my father got a job in a different city. We moved out to a completely different high school, to a massive, massive high school. And you guys know the high school story from there. If you don't, go to my video of why I hated high school. But this was a completely different environment. You were a no nobody being dropped in this. Nobody cared about you. you. Nobody knew you. And you kind of fell into this place where really you can go and try to force yourself into these crowds that have already formed, or you can go ahead and focus on your studies and go ahead and make something of yourself. It was at this point where I picked up all the pre-AP classes I could my sophomore year. Pretty much any honors, pre-AP, anything that they offered, picked it up, put in my grind. This is where I really started the run of never getting a B again. This is around the time when I got involved with community service, clubs, whatever other extracurricular activities there were to do aside from studying this is the time I jump into all of those really this was the year that the work ethic was really built in it really shows that once you eliminate some of these distractions that some of these things I did miss of course I miss being on the basketball team I really miss you know hanging out and and having a good time with the boys you remove these distractions it becomes very clear how much you can do so I went from taking these normal classes no honors no pre-AP to six pre-AP classes supposedly very very hard uh, you know the counselors were telling me hey you know you shouldn't do this switch out for this class and and I was like no I'm gonna do it that brings us to junior and senior year where I took six AP classes each junior and senior year it was a little more difficult than sophomore year but not completely out of the realm of possibility one of the main things I started doing around this time is the dissection of the syllabus trying to see what are the things I really need to do what are the things I need to focus on what are the things that I don't need to do and skip out on so that I can still secure that a that really covers the academic end there's really not much more to add took on a huge workload grinded it out and studied my way into those grades my high school they have these rewards whether you do a thousand hours of community service within an academic year um, you know, it's based on specific activities you do, you would get different rewards. So I basically scoped those rewards out and went after as many as I could. Out and did fundraisers, canned food drives, all sorts of whatever I could get my hand on, I was out there doing it. So got involved in a variety of clubs, pre-med clubs, something called Key Club that I vaguely remember. There was this other acronym, CESF Club or something strange like that. I was involved with that too. Whatever else I found interesting to throw in my application, like chess club, I think I went a couple times. Hey, I'm a chess club member. There's a small little accolades you get of being in the top whatever percentage of class you make the principal's honor list or whatever. Whatever there was, I was trying to get on that list. And then came the SAT. I took the SAT that was on a 2400 scale. And this is far before the time I knew any skills for standardized test taking, all these kind of crazy stuff that Shaman puts up on our channel. If you guys haven't seen it, go check out those videos to help you out on your test taking. But before I knew any of that stuff, I basically studied for the SAT by picking up a random book off the shelf of Barnes & Noble, sitting there at Barnes & Noble's for a couple weeks, obviously going home and then coming back, not literally camping out Barnes & Noble's. <laughs> Basically getting through that book one time, I don't even think I completed the whole thing. I went ahead and sat for the SAT and ended up getting like a 2090 or something like that. It was like barely above 2000. It wasn't anything spectacular by any means. And then without studying for it at all, because I assumed it would be the same stuff, which it mostly was, I went ahead and got 33 on the ACT. Overall, I rounded out my high school academic side with around a 4.9 out of 5 scale. I don't even remember what it was on a 4.0 scale. I took almost every AP test that was offered at the time, maybe with the exception of like maybe four or five of them that I, my school didn't even offer. And that beautiful B in PE because I refused to swim in piss infested water. And I should mention, I had a few other things on my application. I organized a fundraiser to help those individuals affected by a hurricane that happened during the time. I actually had my first job as an MA for a few years during high school where I learned a whole lot of stuff and gave me a whole lot of stuff to talk about. And maybe this is a story for one of our podcasts, but I essentially started a little business where me and my buddies and cousins would go around and try to do anything for money, quote unquote. I am not joking. <laughs> And this is probably a story for a different time, but uh, that, that went on my application. That went on my application. Just a small clarification what I mean. <laughs> 
what I mean by that is things like cutting grass, cleaning your cars, things like that. And that brings me to one of my final points that I think did have a pretty good contributing factor to getting into UC Berkeley. And that was my personal statement. I don't know how much time they have to read. It's even crazy in the medical school, these public universities with how much personal statements they do read. And these days, especially with how much it weighs in on your application. But I wrote a pretty damn good personal statement, if I might say so myself. It was about basketball, my relationship to the court, my perseverance and, and absolute development on the court as this team player, as this leader. And I went on and on and on about how amazing I was on the basketball court and how it had changed my life. So in all honesty, I do think that part of my application did play a role. I remember individuals reading my essay and be like, dude, it's, this is pretty good. And I wish I could find it and pull it up and share it with you guys. If I do come across it, I'll be sure to put it in the comments down below. But that essentially about sums it up. I'm sure it is insanely competitive these days to get into these programs. You probably have to go and save an entire burning family from a building, then go across overseas and start your own fundraiser and start doing all this crazy stuff to even be looked at these days. And overall, if there's anything I would change going back it would be to pay more attention to my Stanford application I only apply to a very small amount of schools I think only the UC's in Stanford that is pretty much the extent of what I apply to for college like I said I was already guaranteed to UC Davis I wasn't gonna go throw money away at some random application and unfortunately that I applied that to Stanford as well I did not pay any attention to my Stanford application personal statement that they asked me I don't even know if the prompt was for that personal statement but I basically took my basketball essay and just copy paste it and whatever they were asking me they could have been asking me about anything <laughs> but that about sums it up guys if you guys did something completely different to get into uc berkeley or a similar university please drop it in the comments down below i'd love to know where you went and what your application looked like especially individuals that have been recently accepted i would love to see what your guys applications look like these days thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to hit the like button down below it helps a lot and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos along with hitting that bell notification. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next one.